There is a massive problem when it comes to the idea that you can use memory-based meditation to improve your focus and concentration, and of course improve your memory, if you can't actually focus or concentrate on the exercises that will get you there. Now I know this problem very well because there are many days where I need to get started on the memory-based meditations that I do, but my focus and concentration isn't there. So I need an on-ramp in order to get the focus going so that I can focus on the more challenging aspects of using memory-based meditation. If you're new here, I will explain what memory-based meditation is. But the first thing to really agree with is that yes, you want better focus. Yes, you want better concentration. And yes, you would enjoy better memory. If I've got a yes, yes, yes on all those things, please hit that thumbs up so the robots know that humans care about the quality of human memory, focus, and attention. Get subscribed if you're new here. This is Dr. Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. And memory-based meditation is very, very important to me because I've been working on improving my memory for many, many years, learning about memory techniques, but I often still to this day have concentration and focus problems. They've never been fixed entirely. I'm not sure that they are entirely fixable. I mean, look at our world. We live with the internet, which is a giant distraction machine for all of its wonderful blessings. It is designed to really cause interruptions to what we're trying to do. And, you know, there's arguments about this and maybe the debate isn't solvable, but I think there's a lot of evidence that shows that our concentration is shrinking. Our attention span is maybe not getting smaller and smaller, but is getting more and more attuned to just the fun stuff. And people are having a harder and harder time focusing on the stuff that gets things done, that improves your life, that makes your life worth living. And we are in some sense becoming enslaved to the attention economy and our attention is just going here, there, and the other place. And I'm as much a person who has to deal with it as anybody else. And I've heard some people talking about how the ancient memory techniques and the ancient meditation techniques are no longer really doing the work that they used to because they're not strong enough to fight against all the forces competing for our attention. So that's part of what makes what we're gonna talk about today so very, very important. And I'm not going to apologize for couching this in so much context. Content may be king, and there's a lot of people who email me and they say, oh, that other person who teaches memory, entertaining but empty. Thank you for giving nuance. Thank you for putting things in context. And the reason why I do that is because context is God. So again, content may be king, but context is God. And we want to think about the real problem we're trying to solve. Now, in terms of these on-ramping exercises, I've got a bunch for you. And the first is to start very, very simply with memory-based meditation. And the first thing is to not memorize anything at all. And so there's a practice that has been shown in scientific studies to improve focus, memory, and concentration called Kirtan Kriya. I myself had to use memory techniques to memorize that term because it's a little bit unusual. But basically what it is, is putting your thumb and finger together and then rotating through all of your fingers like this in a programmatic manner. And if you're listening, I'm putting my thumb on my pointer finger, then my middle finger, then my ring finger, then my pinky finger. The way that this helps is that you then pair it with a sound. Now classically, you can memorize the sound of either sa, ta, na, ma, or as some Chinese speakers do it, a me to fu. And I've read in some books that if you do a me to fu, you will actually escape the wheel of reincarnation and enter nirvana. I don't know if that's true, but I've done it so many times in multiple languages that uh, <laughs> I think maybe I'm at least a contender for escaping the wheel of suffering. But uh, the thing is, is you, if you can't even memorize satanama or a me to fu, you could do one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. And this is just a very simple starter exercise. It's one that I use when I notice that I can't concentrate on the more robust and the more challenging memory-based meditation exercises. And this is ultimately always a memory-based meditation exercise. 
that will improve your focus and concentration because you're basing it on recalling something from memory. It's maybe very, very elementary to recall one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, but nonetheless, it is working with your memory of that content, and you can make it more challenging on that basis. So instead of going one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D, you can go one, three, two, four, or A, C, B, D, it's a stretch for me to even focus on that and it gives me a good workout. And it is using memory in a different way because it's using memory to negate which letters or numbers I'm not supposed to represent auditorily. So it's a great little focus and concentration exercise that uses things that are, are, that are in your memory but that you don't have to memorize in order to do it. But if you want to do Kirtan, kirtan Kriya in Sanskrit, Sata, Nama, you just have to remember those things. And you know you can use your hand as a memory palace to get started with that. Maybe you have salt on this finger, and then you could have a tambourine on this finger for sata. And you know you just work out what images are gonna do that for you. And then you can do the same principle. So you do sata, nama, sata, nama, and then you can skip sa, na, ta, ma. It's really, really challenging. And you can do it forward and backwards and all kinds of variations. But the point is, is it's an on-ramp to some of the more challenging memory-based meditation exercises that increase your focus, your memory, and your concentration. Now, there's no particular special order in the way that I'm going to go through these suggestions, but the next thing that comes to mind that I use to help me focus on memory-based meditation is the memory palace technique. So I have memorized quite a bit of Sanskrit, and if you're interested in being able to memorize long-form mantras, then I would suggest that you get involved in my upcoming Victorious Mind Live cohort course. It's based on my book, The Victorious Mind, but over five weeks we're getting together to work on being able to have you easily memorize Sata Nama, but also memorize all the Sanskrit that you could possibly ever wish. I've memorized lots of long form Sanskrit. There's videos on this channel where I demonstrate that, and you can check out my TEDx talk where I demonstrate some of the Sanskrit that I've memorized. If you want to be able to do that, the reason to be able to do that is it will really improve your focus, concentration, and your memory, but it will also help you feel more in control of your mind. Because if you want to be able to control your mind and have a better control over this very, very difficult world and your passage through it, then memory is the key. And the, it is the key because basically all of reality is appearing in your brain. Your brain uses memory in order for you to interact with things and I can use a lot of science words to explain how that figural memory and episodic memory and procedural memory and prospective memory and all of these memories are all involved in that. But the quality of how you're able to deal with monkey mind is going to come down to memory. So if you'd like to get advanced notification for when the doors open for registration and have a shot at getting a seat in this cohort, go to magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash VML. VML stands for Victorious Mind Live. And I've got a special guided meditation just to thank you for your interest in advanced notification at magneticmerrymethod.com forward slash VML. Now, in terms of using the memory palace, basically what you have to do is just make a memory palace and then on each station of your memory palace, you're going to place associations that help you remember the mantra. So if it's Chittameva Mahat Osham, Chittameva He, Balakaha, Chittameva Mahatmayam, Chittameva Mahanasa, Chittameva He, Mithya, Atma, like all that stuff is really just a place like this bookshelf behind me and then some images that I've placed there. They're not really images, they're more like magnetic associations and they have special characteristics that just help the sound and the meaning of the mantra leap out at my mind and I don't need memory palaces anymore to recite that information. In order to recite these long-form mantras, they're in my long-term memory. However, 
when I have these situations where I can't concentrate, I will still go into the memory palace to help me focus because all I have to do is follow a journey. So if Chittameva Mahadosham is there and the next line is there, I just have to follow the path. And that helps me focus and concentrate on these mantras. Because, you know, if I take all the mantras I've memorized and I do them in a row, it takes an hour basically to get through them all. And wow. The effect after doing that, I, I rarely do them all in one sitting, but when I have, it just makes your mind explode with bliss, especially if you pair it with some of the breathing exercises we'll be covering in Victorious Mind Lab. In any case, it's another strategy. So if you don't use memory palaces, they themselves can help you boost your focus and your concentration, and they also have been shown in scientific studies, such as those by Dr. Tim Dalglish and his research team, to improve your mood and, you know, they're not necessarily going to make you super happy all the time, but I've certainly noticed that they have given me a much, much, much better mood. And again, coupled with a lot of breathing exercises, all the better mood and sustainably, especially when you struggle with mood the way that I do. The next strategy that I use sometimes is kind of silly, but at the same time, it really works. So sometimes I'll just not be able to focus. And instead of going and forcing myself to do mano bujahankara chitani naham, like sometimes I just can't do it. Uh, so what I'll do instead is I'll give myself a bit of a beat. And, you know, it's like this. And the reason why I do it this way is because it reminds me of something I learned when I studied sitar, which is called tintal. And basically, I've sort of modified tintal in a way so that I would go like, Mano bujahankara chitani naham na cha shro trajivi na cha krana nitri na cha vyoma bhumir na tejo na vayu chitananda rupaho shivoham shivoham Chitananda Rupaho Shivoham Shivoham And then I would do that for the next five verses because it's a six verse mantra. And what I'm doing there and why it helps boost the focus and concentration in getting through it is not only do I have to track the beat and keep a regularly steady, I'm not a drummer, but you know, I, I think the beat there is reasonably regular. I try to keep the beat regular, but then on the fifth beat, I turn my hand over. Now, in Tintal, in the sitar world, if I remember correctly, it's on the ninth beat that you turn your hand over. So it'd be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, because Tintal has 16 beat cycles, and that slight deviation on the ninth cycle you indicate by turning your hand over. I've just modified it for greater focus and concentration while reciting mantras it really, really works. And, you know, sometimes I might make a mistake in the recitation as a result of focusing on my hands and the keeping the beat. But overall, it really just reasserts the focus. I really recommend it. And also, it's kind of like Kirtan Kriya in the sense that you're getting your hands involved, but here it's a little bit more vigorous because you'd be hard-pressed to get like a very loud sound out of putting your thumb and four fingers together and your middle finger and, and so forth. So... Yeah, give that a try, and you know you don't have to do it exactly that way. Experiment with it, but that's just one experiment that I came up with by taking Tinta All and applying it to the recitation of mantras. More hand power. You get also a little bit more focus on your on your breath. Maybe not consciously. You're you're not necessarily consciously focusing on your breath, but you're using your breath a little bit more because more of your body is engaged. At least that's what I've noticed as a result of adding what sometimes is quite a vigorous activity to keep the beat. Now, along the lines of practicing greater focus and concentration while exercising your memory, you can keep the beat, but you can also just change the tempo. So that piece that I just recited is called Nirvana Shatakam, 
and that is one particular rhythmical way of singing it. But there's another one, which is something like Manopu jahan kara chitani naham na cha shro trajipi na cha krana nitri. You know, and that is very different. And by learning it and using it as a variation, you will increase the focus you have to bring to the recitation. You'll increase the concentration you need in order to get through it by having a secondary, and maybe there are third, fourth, fifth, who knows how many ways there to do it. You could just make your own way to do it with a different rhythmical structure. And I have found that really challenging to learn it in more than one way. And so when my concentration has faltered, then that's what I do. And, you know, I don't jump into it necessarily in order to increase my focus and concentration. I may start with two to three minutes of satanama, satanama. So the pool is not necessarily going to be helpful if it's cold. Warm it up a little bit. You can also just warm it up with breathing exercises, which is a different topic for a different time. But notice, too, that when you are chanting a mantra in a different tempo, it's going to change your relationship to your breath. So you're going to get more breathing exercise one way or the other as you're getting exercise of memorized content and you're getting the exercise of focusing on it in a different way. Another focus tactic that I use to reassert my concentration is kind of goofy, but I like to do it. And it is to roll my R's. Now, rolling R's, I don't know where exactly I picked it up. I think maybe I first started doing it after I had a class with the film director and artist and writer Peter Greenaway at the European Graduate School. He was rolling his R's all the time, and I think it just sort of rubbed off on me after I had lunch with him one day, and we were talking about all kinds of filmmaking topics. And it just spontaneously happened one day in my memory-based meditation practice that instead of saying, Karturagnia praputefalum. I, just, I can't even stop myself now. <laughs> praputefalum karma kimparam karma tajadam. I don't do it all the time, but sometimes if I find my focus just flagging, I will start to purposely roll my R's so that I'm more engaged in the mantra. Kritimahodado. It's just, it feels so cool. And it's getting you more in your body. So consider rolling your R's, whatever memorized content that you're working with. Now, some of the mantras may not have as many words with R's in them. So that won't necessarily be available for you. Or the R's will be placed in parts of the word that are not as rollable as other ones. Not all techniques have to be for all things. It's just something that I noticed I was doing naturally, and then I doubled down on it by really rolling those R's harder and harder and harder because I noticed it helps reassert my focus and concentration. So give that a try. Man, this might be something lethal, like a beast that can't be tamed. This the kind of rage you can't contain. Yeah, this might be something lethal. You can really see the flames, feeling like it's borderline insane. Then there's the matter of volume. So these techniques have all assumed that you're just reciting your mantras out loud. But there's also volume and there's silent volume, so to speak. So silent volume is, I can't demonstrate this because you just have to do it silently in your head, but often I recite these mantras quietly. But I will imagine turning up the volume. You know that movie Spinal Tap? I think it's Nigel Tufnell is the character's name, and he has this amplifier that turns up to 11. You know, you can have that kind of thing in your mind, and you're turning up your silent recitation of the mantra as loud as you can. Or to help your focus build, you try and concentrate on making it as quiet as possible. It's already totally silent in your mind, insofar as using your imagination and your memory have any anything like silence but nonetheless you know these experiences can be played with to help reassert your focus and concentration or when you are reciting out loud you can whisper you know you, you can think idam shariram kaunteya kshetram iti apidite etad yo veditam prukshetrajna etitad viraha and then you can get louder and louder i won't 
get too excessive here on this video, not blow out anybody's ears, but you could get really, really loud and modulating volume, switching between silent recitation and then having something verbal, skipping around. This can be wonderful, wonderful, wonderful in order to give you more variety in the practice, challenge yourself a bit more and give you the exercise of being more focused on what you're trying to do, which is going to give you the benefits of more focus. And one of the things that we know from lots of studies of lots of things is that when we just keep coming at it, when we keep practicing the practice, what's sometimes called deliberate practice, we're going to grow the skill that we're trying to develop. Obviously, if we give up and we don't do it, then it's not going to grow. But when we focus on it and we show up and we just keep going at it, we'll get there. I've learned lots of complicated pieces of music and I didn't think that I could do it, but I stopped stopping and kept going and going and going and ultimately I was able to play it sufficiently well and it's just true with anything. So keep coming at it and you'll be able to succeed. If you need more help, make sure that you at least signify your interest in magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash VML for victorious mind live. I have that guided meditation recording for you that will help you with some of what we've talked about today. And above all, try to make sure that you just give yourself on ramps so that you have something that you can do rather than doing nothing. It's the old Yoda, do or do not, there is no try. And it's so critical because doing is the thing that gets you to your goal. My personal goal remains to have fewer thoughts, and when I do have thoughts, to have thoughts that are fantastically powerful, empowering, help me help more people in the world, and so far, so good. Thanks for being part of the mission, being subscribed, hitting that thumbs up, and until we have a chance to speak again, as I always like to say, better memory leads to better living, and it will help you keep yourself magnetic.